Being a thief is tough. You don't sleep well knowing that at any moment police could find you. Not to mention the stress of simply pulling off a job. This all makes criminals very tired. Well, these thieves simply are not very good at their jobs. Let's take a look. Sleeping on the job. One would-be thief in Scotland was on the job when he was overcome with sleepiness. He was exhausted. When the homeowners returned home, they found the tired thief asleep in their house, covered in Doritos and having eaten half of a pie. Apparently, he was hungry too. The police took him away in cuffs. Another thief broke into a residence in 2014 in Texas, only get the side he needed a rest. The homeowner, unaware of the sleeping thief, got up early to catch a flight out of town to find the thief in his guest bedroom. He also noticed a number of items in the house missing. He tried to wake the guest from his restful slumber, but apparently the night's activities were too much for him and he wouldn't wake. The homeowner called police and, in the meantime, took a few photos of the man. The thief was arrested the sleepy man. The homeowner's things were found on the thief's front porch. It appeared he had made a number of trips back and forth until he became overcome with the desire to catch a few winks. Cash withdrawal. An ATM was stolen in Oakland, California in January 2024. A witness said that three or four people removed the ATM using a van. Yes, a van. The thieves reportedly dragged the machine down the street behind the van, causing a rash of sparks and noise. Water kills. On April 19, 2022, in Italy, a thief was plying his trade in a closed Italian supermarket. A tall display of water bottles and crates was displayed prominently in the store. The man decided to grab a bottle of water from a towering display. Pulling one of the crates out and taking the bottle caused the entire display to collapse on him like a tidal wave. The next day, the store's employees went to clean up the mess dumbfounded as to how this could happen. Under all of the bottles and crates, they found the body of the man. Cheesy Trail Forensic scientists and crime scene investigators can work wonders these days. They have many high-tech tools they can employ to find criminals. They didn't need those in this case. In 2008, a vending machine stood bruised and battered at a recreation center in Minnesota. The machine was half empty with shards of glass scattered on the floor in front of it. An investigation would reveal that hungry thieves had actually used a chair to get into the machine. However, there was something else, a trail of Cheetos. In the early morning hours, the police followed the trail of Cheetos to a nearby house. Entering the home, they found a Cheetos party in progress. The Cheetos were confiscated. Macaroni misstep. In 2015, three robbers looted a local burger diner in New York. The group swiped a sales register, parts of the shop's surveillance system, and a bowl of macaroni salad. The local sheriff's office recovered parts of the missing sales register and security system along with rubber gloves, loose change, and a trail of macaroni salad. Three men were caught and charged with third-degree burglary. Apparently, the trio took turns eating the salad along their escape route. Don't bet on it. Even one of the most experienced wrongdoers can leave a trail of incriminating evidence. Even the smallest mistake can end a criminal's career. In 2017, a 26-year-old man entered a betting parlor in England. He proceeded to rob the establishment making use of an imitation gun. The masked man handed a betting slip to an employee. It told the employee to open the door, or they would be shot. After the door was unlocked, the man demanded the contents of the safe. The employee complied and emptied the money in the safe and from the cash drawer into a bag. The thief then fled, but in doing so, removed his mask and was captured on a security camera. Not worried, he believed it would take police several hours to identify him and seek out where he lived. Well, it so happened that he had previously applied for a job at this very same location. He also left his resume. It was determined that he was a frequent patron of the betting establishment and was recognized by the manager. 
the supervisor handed over the man's details to the authorities. The police searched the thief's home and discovered all the proof they required. The imitation gun, the wagering slip, and the bag in which he carried the cash were all there. He was sentenced to six years in jail. Candy Thief A man in Montana broke into the newsroom of the local paper. He made use of the computers to watch porn and check his Facebook account. Following this, he proceeded to spray the workplace with a fire extinguisher, swiped some candy, and departed. Finding him wasn't difficult for the police. They just followed the trail of stolen M&Ms that led to his sister's house. Ashes to Nose In 2011, a gang of five repeat offenders in Florida broke into a house and were happily stunned to locate a not-so-secret stock of cocaine in fancy containers. They didn't realize that the grainy material in the containers were ashes, and the expensive jars were urns. The ashes came from two Great Danes and the homeowner's father. The burglars also seized a flat-screen television, a DVD player, a laptop, and some jewelry. They then tasted and snorted the cremated human and canine remains. After conducting the taste test, the thieves believed that they were walking around with stolen cocaine. It was just when one of the robbers checked out a newspaper article about the stolen ashes that they realized the truth. The gang was racked with guilt, but they decided not to return the remains. The police found the remains of the father and one of the pets in a lake. All the wrongdoers were eventually captured. The suspects were charged with numerous offenses, including domestic robbery. Liquor Store Casanova A shoplifter at a liquor store took a bottle of vodka. Nevertheless, this was no ordinary burglary, as he left behind his name and contact information with the clerk. It seemed he had ulterior motives, as he had asked the clerk out on a date. The story of the liquor store Casanova promptly unraveled with his identity being quickly discovered. Ticket to the Afterlife A 31-year-old man in Germany was having a few drinks at a bar to get him ready for the day's activities. He later went to a train station and was seen putting aerosol gas cans into a ticket vending machine, packing the empty cans into a bag and ignited the gas. Spray paint being flammable, what followed was an explosion that shook the neighborhood. He thought he was purchasing a ticket to the good life when he blasted apart the ticketing machine on March 21, 2017. Instead, he bought passage in the opposite direction and perished in an explosion that tore the metal front panel off the machine. Unprofessional Thief a bungling thief in the UK found out the hard way that crime doesn't pay. The 49-year-old had previously attempted to break into a different property in the same neighborhood. He failed at that one, leaving behind blood. The man, a serial transgressor, mishandled not one but two break-ins, displaying a remarkable lack of ability for thievery. His first heist yielded a meager 85 pounds, which he immediately wasted on another ill-fated attempt. This time, he returned to the exact same home to be greeted by two law enforcement officers that were taking a statement from the property owner. The officers quickly captured the unlucky wrongdoer. His ineptitude did not go undetected. His attorney defined his antics as clumsy and pathetic, while the judge branded him not a very good burglar. The man was saved prison time, obtaining a four-month time limit and 80 hours of community service instead. The judge said that if he hadn't acted so unprofessionally, he would have given him a second chance. The judge's parting words were a strict suggestion to prospective thieves. Hone your skills, or you won't get jail time. Oh, forensics confirmed the blood at the first break-in was his. Crunchy Copper Chips on May 19, 2014, in Arizona, a man's mummified remains were found in a manhole. The manhole was opened in May in order to look into an electrical power fluctuation. Tucson electric power records indicate that the manhole had not been opened in the previous five years, 
Therefore, the team venturing into the underground high-voltage vault was taken aback upon discovering the dehydrated corpse of a man hunched over exposed copper wires holding bolt cutters. Apparently, he was trying to cut the cables in order to sell the copper in the wires. The obvious conclusion that electrocution was most likely the cause of death was confirmed by an autopsy. Copper caper. Stealing is never a good idea. Stealing copper wire can be deadly. A 16-year-old in Leeds, UK, found that out on July 3, 2011. While it's possible to make a little money by selling stolen wire, the risk doesn't outweigh the benefits. Which brings us to the boy who, while attempting to steal copper grounding wire, was electrocuted. Bad Dad Bring your kid to work day is a long-honored practice that permits youngsters to see what goes on in the business world while being able to watch their moms and dads ply their trade. One bad dad brought his young son along with him to work, which turned out to be a robbery of a family pet shop. He was captured not long after, minus something crucial, his child. Look where you're going! As two men waited in line at the coffee house to pay their bill, a third cut in front of them. He threw a beverage at the clerk and demanded all the cash from the till. Briefly shocked, the men quickly regrouped and cuffed the criminal. Obviously, in his rush, the criminal didn't see they were police officers in full uniform. Please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more.